Funk, Wikipedia Audio Funk is a music genre that originated in the mid-1960s when African-American musicians created a rhythmic, danceable new form of music through a mixture of soul music, jazz, and rhythm and blues. Funk de emphasizes melody and chord progressions used in other related genres and brings a strong rhythmic groove of a bass line played by an electric bassist and a drum part played by a drummer to the foreground. Like much of African-inspired music, funk typically consists of a complex groove with rhythm instruments playing interlocking grooves. Funk uses the same richly colored extended chords found in bebop jazz, such as minor chords with added sevenths and elevenths, or dominant seventh chords with altered ninths. Funk originated in the mid-1960s with James Brown's development of a signature groove that emphasized the downbeat with heavy emphasis on the first beat of every measure, and the application of swung sixteenth notes and syncopation on all bass lines, drum patterns, and guitar riffs. Other musical groups, including Sly and the Family Stone, The Meters, and Parliament Funkadelic, soon began to adopt and develop Brown's innovations. While much of the written history of funk focuses on men, there have been notable funk women, including Chaka Khan, LaBelle, Lynn Collins, Brides of Funkenstein, Climax, Mother's Finest, and Betty Davis. Funk derivatives include the psychedelic funk eras of Sly Stone and George Clinton, the avant funk of white groups such as Talking Heads and the pop group. Boogie, a form of post-disco dance music, electro music, a hybrid of electronic music and funk, funk metal, G-funk, a mix of gangsta rap and funk, timba, a form of funky Cuban popular dance music, and funk jam. Funk samples and breakbeats have been used extensively in genres including hip-hop and various forms of electronic dance music, such as house music, old-school rave, breakbeat, and drum and bass. It is also the main influence of go-go, a sub-genre associated with funk. Etymology The word funk initially referred to a strong odor. It is originally derived from Latin fumigare via Old French fungier and in this sense, it was first documented in English in 1620. In 1784 funky meaning musty was first documented, which, in turn, led to a sense of earthy that was taken up around 1900 in early jazz slang for something deeply or strongly felt. In early jam sessions, Musicians would encourage one another to get down by telling one another, now, put some stank on it. At least as early as 1907, jazz songs carried titles such as Funky. The first example is an unrecorded number by Buddy Bolden, remembered as either Funky Butt or Buddy Bolden's blues with improvised lyrics that were, according to Donald M. Marquis, either comical and light or crude and downright obscene but, in one way or another, referring to the sweaty atmosphere at dances where Balden's band played. As late as the 1950s and early 1960s, when funk and funky were used increasingly in the context of jazz music, the terms still were considered indelicate and inappropriate for use in polite company. According to one source, New Orleans-born drummer Earl Palmer was the first to use the word funky to explain to other musicians that their music should be made more syncopated and danceable. The style later evolved into a rather hard-driving, insistent rhythm, implying a more carnal quality. This early form of the music set the pattern for later musicians. The music was identified as slow, sexy, loose riff-oriented and danceable. A great deal of funk is rhythmically based on a two-celled on-beat-slash-off-beat structure, 
which originated in sub-Saharan African music traditions. New Orleans appropriated the bifurcated structure from the Afro-Cuban mambo and conga in the late 1940s, and made it its own. New Orleans funk, as it was called, gained international acclaim largely because James Brown's rhythm section used it to great effect. Funk creates an intense groove by using strong guitar riffs and bass lines. Like Motown recordings, funk songs used bass lines as the centerpiece of songs. Slap bass's mixture of thumb-slapped low notes and finger-popped high notes allowed the bass to have a drum-like rhythmic role, which became a distinctive element of funk. In funk bands, Guitarists typically play in a percussive style, often using the wah-wah sound effect and muting the notes in their riffs to create a percussive sound. Guitarist Ernie Isley of the Isley Brothers and Eddie Hazel of Funkadelic were notably influenced by Jimi Hendrix's improvised solos. Eddie Hazel, who worked with George Clinton, is one of the most notable guitar soloists in funk. Ernie Isley was tutored at an early age by Jimi Hendrix himself, when he was a part of the Isley Brothers backing band and temporarily lived in the attic at the Isleys' household. Jimmy Nolan and Phelps Collins are famous funk rhythm guitarists who both worked with James Brown. On Brown's Give It Up or Turn It A Loose, Jimmy Nolan's guitar part has a bare-bones tonal structure. The pattern of attack points is the emphasis, not the pattern of pitches. The guitar is used the way that an African drum, or idiophone would be used. Note that the measures alternate between beginning on the beat, and beginning on off beats. Funk uses the same richly colored extended chords found in bebop jazz, such as minor chords with added sevenths and elevenths or dominant seventh chords with altered ninths. However, unlike bebop jazz, with its complex, rapid-fire chord changes, funk virtually abandoned chord changes, creating static single chord vamps with melodoharmonic movement and a complex, driving rhythmic feel. Some of the best known and most skillful soloists in funk have jazz backgrounds. Trombonist Fred Wesley and saxophonist Pee Wee Ellis and Maceo Parker are among the most notable musicians in the funk music genre, with both of them working with James Brown, George Clinton, and Prince. The chords used in funk songs typically imply a Dorian or Mixolydian mode, as opposed to the major or natural minor tonalities of most popular music. Melodic content was derived by mixing these modes with the blues scale. In the 1970s, jazz music drew upon funk to create a new subgenre of jazz funk, which can be heard in recordings by Miles Davis and Herbie Hancock. The distinctive characteristics of African American musical expression are rooted in sub Saharan African music traditions and find their earliest expression in spirituals, work chants slash songs, praise shouts, gospel, blues, and body rhythms. Funk music is an amalgam of soul music, soul jazz, R&B, and Afro-Cuban rhythms absorbed and reconstituted in New Orleans. Like other styles of African-American musical expression including jazz, soul music, and R&B, Funk music accompanied many protest movements during and after the civil rights movement. Funk allowed everyday experiences to be expressed to challenge daily struggles and hardships fought by lower and working class communities. Gerhard Kubik notes that with the exception of New Orleans, early blues lacked complex polyrhythms, and there was a very specific absence of asymmetric timeline patterns in virtually all early 20th century African American music, only in some New Orleans genres does a hint of simple timeline patterns occasionally appear in the form of transient so-called stomp patterns or stop-time chorus. 
these do not function in the same way as African timelines. Characteristics In the late 1940s this changed somewhat when the two-celled timeline structure was brought into New Orleans blues. New Orleans musicians were especially receptive to Afro-Cuban influences precisely at the time when R&B was first forming. Dave Bartholomew and Professor Longhair incorporated Afro-Cuban instruments, as well as the clave pattern and related two-celled figures in songs such as Carnival Day and Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Robert Palmer reports that, in the 1940s, Professor Longhair listened to and played with musicians from the islands and fell under the spell of Perez Prado S. Mambo Records. Professor Longhair's particular style was known locally as Rumba Boogie. One of Longhair's great contributions was his particular approach of adopting two-celled, clave-based patterns into New Orleans rhythm and blues. Longhair's rhythmic approach became a basic template of funk. According to Dr. John, the professor put funk into music. Longhair's thing had a direct bearing I'd say on a large portion of the funk music that evolved in New Orleans. In his Mardi Gras in New Orleans, the pianist employs the two to three clave on beat slash off beat motif in a rumba boogie guajao. The syncopated, but straight subdivision feel of Cuban music took root in New Orleans R&B during this time. Stewart states, eventually, musicians from outside of New Orleans began to learn some of the rhythmic practices. Most important of these were James Brown and the drummers and arrangers he employed. Brown's early repertoire had used mostly shuffle rhythms, and some of his most successful songs were 12 eighths ballads, Bewildered, I Don't Mind. Brown's change to a funkier brand of soul required four fourths meter and a different style of drumming. Stewart makes the point, the singular style of rhythm and blues that emerged from New Orleans in the years after World War II played an important role in the development of funk. In a related development, the underlying rhythms of American popular music underwent a basic, yet generally unacknowledged transition from triplet or shuffle feel to even or straight eighth notes. Little Richard S. Saxophone Studded, mid-1950s R&B road band was credited by James Brown and others as being the first to put the funk in the rock and roll beat. Following his temporary exit from secular music to become an evangelist in 1957, some of Little Richard's band members joined Brown and the Famous Flames, beginning a long string of hits for them in 1958. By the mid-1960s, James Brown had developed his signature groove that emphasized the downbeat with heavy emphasis on the first beat of every measure to edge his distinctive sound rather than the backbeat that typified African-American music. Brown often cued his band with the command on the one, changing the percussion emphasis slash accent from the 1-2-3-4 backbeat of traditional soul music to the 1-2-3-4 downbeat but with an even note syncopated guitar rhythm featuring a hard-driving, repetitive brassy swing. This 1-3 beat launched the shift in Brown's signature music style starting with his 1964 hit single, Out of Sight and his 1965 hits, Papa's Got a Brand New Bag and I Got You. Brown's style of funk was based on interlocking, contrapuntal parts, funky bass lines, drum patterns, and syncopated guitar riffs. The main guitar ostinatos for Ain't It Funky is an example of Brown's refinement of New Orleans funk and irresistibly danceable riff, stripped down to its rhythmic essence. On Ain't It Funky the tonal structure is bare bones. Brown's innovations led to him and his band becoming the seminal funk act. They also pushed the funk music style further to the forefront with releases such as Cold Sweat, 
Mother Popcorn and Get Up Sex Machine, discarding even the 12 bar blues featured in his earlier music. Instead, Brown's music was overlaid with catchy, anthemic vocals based on extensive vamps in which he also used his voice as a percussive instrument with frequent rhythmic grunts and with rhythm section patterns. West African polyrhythms a tradition evident in African-American work songs and chants. Throughout his career, Brown's frenzied vocals, frequently punctuated with screams and grunts, channeled the ecstatic ambience of the black church in a secular context. After 1965, Brown's band leader and arranger was Alfred P. Wee Ellis. Ellis credits Clyde Stubblefield's adoption of New Orleans drumming techniques, as the basis of modern funk, if, in a studio, you said play it funky that could imply almost anything. But give me a New Orleans beat you got exactly what you wanted. And Clyde Stubblefield was just the epitome of this funky drumming. Stewart states that the popular feel was passed along from New Orleans through James Brown's music, to the popular music of the 1970s. Concerning the various funk motifs, Stewart states, this model, it should be noted, is different from a timeline in that it is not an exact pattern, but more of a loose organizing principle. In a 1990 interview, Brown offered his reason for switching the rhythm of his music, I changed from the upbeat to the downbeat. Simple as that, really. According to Masio Parker, Brown's former saxophonist, playing on the downbeat was at first hard for him and took some getting used to. Reflecting back to his early days with Brown's band, Parker reported that he had difficulty playing on the one during solo performances, since he was used to hearing and playing with the accent on the second beat. Rhythm Harmony Other musical groups picked up on the rhythms and vocal style developed by James Brown and his band, and the funk style began to grow. Dyke and the Blazers, based in Phoenix, Arizona, released Funky Broadway in 1967, perhaps the first record of the soul music era to have funky in the title. In 1969 Jimmy McGriff released Electric Funk, featuring his distinctive organ over a blazing horn section. Meanwhile, on the West Coast, Charles Wright and the Watts 103rd Street Rhythm Band was releasing funk tracks beginning with its first album in 1967, culminating in the classic single Express Yourself in 1971. Also from the West Coast area, more specifically Oakland, San Francisco, came the band Tower of Power, which formed in 1968. Their debut album East Bay Grease, released 1970, is considered an important milestone in funk. Throughout the 1970s, Top had many hits, and the band helped to make funk music a successful genre, with a broader audience. History New Orleans 1960s, James Brown Late 1960s Early 1970s P-Funk, Parliament Funk Cadillac In 1970, Sly and the Family Stone's Thank You reached number one on the charts, as did Family Affair in 1971. Notably, these afforded the group and the genre crossover success and greater recognition, yet such success escaped comparatively talented and moderately popular funk band peers. The Meters defined funk in New Orleans, starting with their top 10 R&B hits Sophisticated Sissy and Sissy Strut in 1969. Another group who defined funk around this time were the Isley Brothers, whose funky 1969 number one R&B hit, It's Your Thing 
signaled a breakthrough in African-American music, bridging the gaps of the jazzy sounds of Brown, the psychedelic rock of Jimi Hendrix, and the upbeat soul of Sly and the Family Stone and Mother's Finest. The Temptations, who had previously helped to define the Motown sound a distinct blend of pop soul adopted this new psychedelic sound towards the end of the 1960s as well. Their producer, Norman Whitfield, became an innovator in the field of psychedelic soul, creating hits with a newer, funkier sound for many Motown acts, including War by Edwin Starr, Smiling Faces Sometimes by The Undisputed Truth and Papa Was a Rollin' Stone by The Temptations. Motown producers Frank Wilson and Hal Davis followed suit. Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye also adopted funk beats for some of their biggest hits in the 1970s, such as Superstition and You Haven't Done Nothing, and I Want You and Got to Give It Up, respectively. A new group of musicians began to further develop the funk rock approach. Innovations were prominently made by George Clinton, with his bands Parliament and Funkadelic. Together, they produced a new kind of funk sound heavily influenced by jazz and psychedelic rock. The two groups shared members and are often referred to collectively as Parliament Funkadelic. The breakout popularity of Parliament Funkadelic gave rise to the term P-Funk, which referred to the music by George Clinton's bands, and defined a new sub-genre. Clinton played a principal role in several other bands, including Parlet, The Horny Horns, and The Brides of Funkenstein, all part of the P-Funk conglomerate. P-Funk also came to mean something in its quintessence, of superior quality, or sui generis. The 1970s were the era of highest mainstream visibility for funk music. In addition to Parliament Funkadelic, Artists like Sly and the Family Stone, Rufus and Chaka Khan, the Isley Brothers, Ohio Players, Con Funk Shun, Cool and the Gang, the Barkays, Commodores, Roy Ayers, Stevie Wonder, among others, were successful in getting radio play. Disco music owed a great deal to funk. Many early disco songs and performers came directly from funk-oriented backgrounds. Some disco music hits, such as all of Barry White's hits, Kung Fu Fighting by Bidu and Carl Douglas, Donna Summer's Love to Love You Baby, Diana Ross Love Hangover, KC and the Sunshine Band's I'm Your Boogie Man, I'm Every Woman by Chaka Khan and Chic SLE Freak conspicuously include riffs and rhythms derived from funk. In 1976, Rose Royce scored a number one hit with a purely dance funk record, Car Wash. Even with the arrival of disco, funk became increasingly popular well into the early 80s. 1970s Funk music was also exported to Africa and it melded with African singing and rhythms to form Afrobeat. Nigerian musician Fela Kuti, who was heavily influenced by James Brown's music, is credited with creating the style and terming it Afrobeat. In the 1970s, at the same time that jazz musicians began to explore blending jazz with rock to create jazz fusion, major jazz performers began to experiment with funk. Jazz funk recordings typically used electric bass and electric piano in the rhythm section, in place of the double bass and acoustic piano that were typically used in jazz up till that point. Pianist and band leader Herbie Hancock was the first of many big jazz artists who embraced funk during the decade. Hancock's Headhunters band played the jazz funk style. The Headhunters lineup and instrumentation retaining only wind player Benny Maupin from Hancock's previous sextet, reflected his new musical direction. 
he used percussionist Bill Summers in addition to a drummer. Summers blended African, Afro-Cuban, and Afro-Brazilian instruments and rhythms into Hancock's jazzy funk sound. On the corner was jazz trumpeter composer Miles Davis's seminal foray into jazz funk. Like his previous works though, On the Corner was experimental. Davis stated that On the Corner was an attempt at reconnecting with the young black audience which had largely forsaken jazz for rock and funk. While there is a discernible funk influence in the timbers of the instruments employed, other tonal and rhythmic textures, such as the Indian tambora and tublas, and Cuban congas and bongos, create a multi-layered soundscape. From a musical standpoint, the album was a culmination of sorts of the recording studio-based music concrete approach that Davis and producer Teo Macero had begun to explore in the late 1960s. Both sides of the record featured heavy funk drum and bass grooves, with the melodic parts snipped from hours of jams and mixed in the studio. Also cited as musical influences on the album by Davis were the contemporary composer Karl Heinz Stockhausen. In the 1980s, largely as a reaction against what was seen as the overindulgence of disco, many of the core elements that formed the foundation of the P-Funk formula began to be usurped by electronic instruments, drum machines, and synthesizers. Horn sections of saxophones and trumpets were replaced by synth keyboards, and the horns that remained were given simplified lines, and few horn solos were given to soloists. The classic electric keyboards of funk, like the Hammond B3 organ, the Honer Clavinet and Slash or the Fender Rhodes piano began to be replaced by the new digital synthesizers such as the Yamaha DX7. Electronic drum machines such as the Roland TR-808 began to replace the funky drummers of the past, and the slap and pop style of bass playing were often replaced by synth keyboard bass lines. Lyrics of funk songs began to change from suggestive double entendres to more graphic and sexually explicit content. In the late 1970s, the electronic music band Yellow Magic Orchestra began experimenting with electronic funk music, introducing video game funk sounds with hits such as Computer Game, which had a strong influence on the later electro-funk genre. In 1980, YMO was the first band to use the TR-808 programmable drum machine, while YMO member Ryuichi Sakamoto's Riot in Lagos developed the beats and sounds of electrofunk that same year, influencing later electrofunk artists such as Africa Bombeta and Mantronics. Rick James was the first funk musician of the 1980s to assume the funk mantle dominated by P funk in the 1970s. His 1981 album Street Songs with the singles Give It To Me Baby and Super Freak, resulted in James becoming a star, and paved the way for the future direction of explicitness in funk. Jazz Funk Beginning in the late 1970s, Prince used a stripped-down, dynamic instrumentation similar to James. However, Prince went on to have as much of an impact on the sound of funk as any one artist since Brown, he combined eroticism, technology, an increasing musical complexity, and an outrageous image and stage show to ultimately create music as ambitious and imaginative as P-Funk. Prince formed the time, originally conceived as an opening act for him and based on his Minneapolis sound hybrid mixture of funk, R&B, rock, pop and new wave. Eventually, the band went on to define their own style of stripped-down funk based on tight musicianship and sexual themes. Similar to Prince, 
other bands emerged during the P-Funk era and began to incorporate uninhibited sexuality, dance-oriented themes, synthesizers, and other electronic technologies to continue to craft funk hits. These included Cameo, Zap, The Gap Band, The Barcase, and The Daz Band all found their biggest hits in the early 1980s. By the latter half of the 80s, pure funk had lost its commercial impact, however, pop artists from Michael Jackson to Duran Duran often used funk beats. Headhunters Influenced by Yellow Magic Orchestra and Kraftwerk, the American musician Africa Bombayta developed electro-funk, a minimalist machine-driven style of funk with his single Planet Rock in 1982. Also known simply as Electro, this style of funk was driven by synthesizers and the electronic rhythm of the TR-808 drum machine. The single Renegades of Funk followed in 1983. While funk was all but driven from the radio by slick commercial hip-hop, contemporary R&B, and new jack swing, its influence continued to spread. Artists like Steve Arrington and Cameo still received major airplay and had huge global followings. Rock bands began copying elements of funk to their sound, creating new combinations of funk rock and funk metal. Extreme Red Hot Chili Peppers, Living Color, Jane's Addiction, Prince, Primus, Fishbone, Faith No More, Rage Against the Machine, Infectious Grooves, and Incubus spread the approach and styles garnered from funk pioneers to new audiences in the mid to late 1980s and the 1990s. These bands later inspired the underground mid-1990s funk core movement and current funk-inspired artists like Outkast, Molina Moy, Van Hunt, and Gnarls Barkley. On the Corner 1980s and Synthesizer Funk Late 1980s to Present In the 1990s, Artists like Michel Endagiocello and the acid jazz movement including artists and bands such as Jamai Roque, Incognito, Galliano, Omar, Los Tetas and the brand New Heavies carried on with strong elements of funk. However, they never came close to reaching the commercial success of funk in its heyday with the exception of Jamai Roque whose album Traveling Without Moving sold about 11.5 million units worldwide. Meanwhile, in Australia and New Zealand, bands playing the pub circuit, such as Super Groove, Skunk Hour, and The Truth, preserved a more instrumental form of funk. Since the late 1980s hip-hop artists have regularly sampled old funk tunes. James Brown is said to be the most sampled artist in the history of hip-hop, while P-Funk is the second most sampled artist. Samples of old Parliament and Funkadelic songs formed the basis of West Coast G-Funk. Original beats that feature funk-styled bass or rhythm guitar riffs are also not uncommon. Dr. Dre has freely acknowledged to being heavily influenced by George Clinton's psychedelic funk. Back in the 70s that's all people were doing, getting high, wearing afros, bell-bottoms and listening to Parliament Funkadelic. That's why I called my album The Chronic and based my music and the concepts like I did, because his shit was a big influence on my music. Very big. Digital Underground was a large contributor to the rebirth of funk in the 1990s by educating their listeners with knowledge about the history of funk and its artists. George Clinton branded Digital Underground as Sons of the P, as their second full-length release is also titled. Dew's first release, Sex Packets, was full of funk samples with the most widely known the Humpty Dance sampling Parliament's Let's Play House. A very strong funk album of Dues was their 1996 release Future Rhythm. Much of contemporary club dance music, 
drum and bass in particular has heavily sampled funk drum breaks. Funk is a major element of certain artists identified with the jam band scene of the late 1990s and 2000s. Fish began playing funkier jams in their sets around 1996, and 1998's The Story of the Ghost was heavily influenced by funk. Meatski Martin and Wood, Robert Randolph and the Family Band, Galactic, Widespread Panic, Jam Underground, Diaspora, Saliv, and Carl Denson's Tiny Universe all drawing heavily from the funk tradition. Lettuce, a band of Berklee College of Music graduates, was formed in the late 1990s as a pure funk emergence was being felt through the jam band scene. Many members of the band including keyboardist Neil Evans went on to other projects such as Soliv or the Sam Kininger Band. Dump Staff Funk builds upon the New Orleans tradition of funk, with their gritty, low-ended grooves and soulful four-part vocals. Formed in 2003 to perform at the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival, the band features keyboardist Yvonne Neville and guitarist Ian Neville of the famous Neville family, with two bass players and female funk drummer Nikki Glaspie, who joined the group in 2011. Since the mid-1990s the new funk scene, centered on the deep funk collector's scene, is producing new material influenced by the sounds of rare funk 45s. Labels include Desco, Soul Fire, Daptone, Timian, Neapolitan, Bananarama, KD, and Tramp. These labels often release on 45 RPM records. Although specializing in music for rare funk DJs, there has been some crossover into the mainstream music industry, such as Sharon Jones' 2005 appearance on Late Night with Conan O'Brien. In the early 2000s, some punk funk bands such as Outhud and Mongolian Monkfish perform in the indie rock scene. Indie band Rillo Killy, in keeping with their tendency to explore a variety of rockish styles, incorporated funk into their song The Moneymaker on the album Under the Black Light. Prince, with his later albums, gave a rebirth to the funk sound with songs like The Everlasting Now, Musicology, OL School Company, and Black Sweat. Funk has also been incorporated into modern R&B music by many female singers such as Beyoncé with her 2003 hit Crazy in Love, Mariah Carey in 2005 with Get Your Number, Jennifer Lopez in 2005 with Get Right, and also Amory with her song One Thing. Tamar Braxton in 2013 with The One. Despite funk's popularity in modern music, few people have examined the work of funk women. As cultural critic Cheryl Keyes explains in her essay She Was Too Black for Rock and Too Hard for Soul, discovering the musical career of Betty Mabry Davis. Most of the scholarship around funk has focused on the cultural work of men. She states that Betty Davis is an artist whose name has gone unheralded as a pioneer in the annals of funk and rock. Most writing on these musical genres has traditionally placed male artists like Jimi Hendrix, George Clinton, and bassist Larry Graham as trendsetters in the shaping of a rock music sensibility. Notable funk women include Chaka Khan, LaBelle, Brides of Funkenstein, Climax, Mother's Finest, Lynn Collins, Betty Davis and Tina Marie. From the early 1970s onwards, funk has developed various sub-genres. While George Clinton and the Parliament were making a harder variation of funk, Bands such as Cool and the Gang, Ohio Players, and Earth, Wind and Fire were making disco-influenced funk music. Following the work of Jimi Hendrix in the late 1960s, 
black funk artists such as Sly and the Family Stone pioneered a style known as psychedelic funk by borrowing techniques from psychedelic rock music, including wah pedals, fuzz boxes, echo chambers, and vocal distorters, as well as blues rock and jazz. In the following years, groups such as George Clinton's Parliament Funkadelic continued this sensibility, employing synthesizers and rock-oriented guitar work. Funk rock fuses funk and rock elements. Its earliest incarnation was heard in the late 60s through the mid-70s by musicians such as Jimi Hendrix, Frank Zappa, Steely Dan, Herbie Hancock, Return to Forever, Gary Wright, David Bowie, Betty Davis, Mother's Finest, and Funkadelic on their earlier albums. Many instruments may be incorporated into funk rock, but the overall sound is defined by a definitive bass or drum beat and electric guitars. The bass and drum rhythms are influenced by funk music but with more intensity while the guitar can be funk or rock influenced, usually with distortion. Prince, Jesse Johnson, Red Hot Chili Peppers and Fishbone are major artists in funk rock. The term avant funk has been used to describe acts who combined funk with art rock's concerns. Simon Frith described the style as an application of progressive rock mentality to rhythm rather than melody and harmony. Simon Reynolds characterized avant funk as a kind of psychedelia in which oblivion was to be attained not through rising above the body, rather through immersion in the physical, self loss through animalism. Acts in the genre include German kraut rock band Can, American funk artists Sly Stone and George Clinton, and a wave of early 1980s UK and US post-punk artists who embraced black dance music styles such as disco and funk. The artists of the late 1970s New York No Wave scene also explored avant funk, influenced by figures such as Ornette Coleman. Reynolds noted these artists' preoccupations with issues such as alienation, repression, and technocracy of Western modernity. Go-Go originated in the Washington, D.C. area with which it remains associated, along with other spots in the Mid-Atlantic. Inspired by singers such as Chuck Brown, the godfather of Go-Go, it is a blend of funk, rhythm, and blues, and early hip-hop, with a focus on lo-fi percussion instruments and in-person jamming in place of dance tracks. As such, it is primarily a dance music with an emphasis on live audience call and response. Go-go rhythms are also incorporated into street percussion. Boogie is an electronic music mainly influenced by funk and post-disco. The minimalist approach of boogie, consisting of synthesizers and keyboards, helped to establish electro and house music. Boogie, unlike electro, emphasizes the slapping techniques of bass guitar but also bass synthesizers. Artists include Vicky D, Comico, Peach Boys, Kashif, and later Evelyn King. Electro-funk is a hybrid of electronic music and funk. It essentially follows the same form as funk, and retains funk's characteristics but is made entirely with the use of electronic instruments such as the TR-808. Vocoders or talk boxes were commonly implemented to transform the vocals. The pioneering electro band Zap commonly used such instruments in their music. Other artists include Herbie Hancock, Africa Bombay Tat, Egyptian Lover, Von Mason and Crew, Midnight Star, and Cybotron. Funk metal is a fusion genre of music which emerged in the 1980s, as part of the alternative metal movement. It typically incorporates elements of funk and heavy metal, and in some cases other styles, such as punk and experimental music. It features hard-driving heavy metal guitar riffs, 
the pounding bass rhythms characteristic of funk, and sometimes hip-hop style rhymes into an alternative rock approach to songwriter. A primary example is the all-African-American rock band Living Color, who have been said to be funk metal pioneers by Rolling Stone. During the late 1980s and early 1990s, the style was most prevalent in California particularly Los Angeles and San Francisco. G-Funk is a fusion genre of music which combines gangsta rap and funk. It is generally considered to have been invented by West Coast rappers and made famous by Dr. Dre. It incorporates multi-layered and melodic synthesizers, slow hypnotic grooves, a deep bass, background female vocals, the extensive sampling of P-Funk tunes, and a high-pitched portamento saw wave synthesizer lead. Unlike other earlier rap acts that also utilized funk samples, G-Funk often used fewer, unaltered samples per song. Timba is a form of funky Cuban popular dance music. By 1990, several Cuban bands had incorporated elements of funk and hip-hop into their arrangements, and expanded upon the instrumentation of the traditional CONJ unto with American drum set, saxophones and a two-keyboard format. Timba bands like La Charanga Abanero or Bombaleo often have horns or other instruments playing short parts of tunes by Earth, Wind, and Fire, Cool and the Gang or other U.S. funk bands. While many funk motifs exhibit a clave-based structure, they are created intuitively, without a conscious intent of aligning the various parts to a guide pattern. Timba incorporates funk motifs into an overt and intentional clave structure. Along with the Cuban congas and timbals, the drum set provided powerful clave-based funk patterns that added more punch to the rhythm section. Funk is especially evident in timba's breakdown sections. The following example is Calixto Oviedo's funky drum set pattern for a type of high-energy breakdown known as Prezion. Timba bass players incorporated techniques associated with funk, such as slapping, and pulling the strings in a percussive way. The following excerpt demonstrates several funk characteristics of timba bass. This is Elaine Perez's bass tumbeo from a performance of Isaac Delgado piece La Vida Sin Esperanza. Perez's playful interpretation of the tumbeo is what timba authority Kevin Moore refers to as controlled improvisation, the pattern continuously varies within a set framework. Funk jam is a fusion genre of music which emerged in the 1990s. It typically incorporates elements of funk and often exploratory guitar, along with extended cross-genre improvisations, often including elements of jazz, ambient, electronic, Americana, and hip-hop including improvised lyrics. Fish, Soul Rebels Brass Band, Galactic, Soliv are all examples of funk bands that play funk jam. Women and Funk Derivatives Psychedelic Funk Funk Rock Avant Funk Go-Go Boogie Electro Funk Funk Metal G-Funk Timba Funk Drumset Bass Funk Jam Notes